Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our videos. Today I'm going to be doing a quick review on this OBD2 code reader from Autofix. It comes in the package with the unit itself along with the instruction manual which tells you how to operate it. And in addition to doing the normal OBD2 code reader thing of checking for trouble codes and reporting back the trouble code to you, it will also tell you what those trouble codes mean, which in the case of say a PO101 code is a mass airflow sensor error. It's going to tell you that that's an issue with the mass airflow sensor to give you a better idea of where to start checking for the issues. And in addition to that, it can also do a battery check to let you know whether or not your battery is okay. It can do readiness monitor uh, checks to let you know if you're okay to go do an emissions check. In most states, that's a you know, plug-in OBD2 emissions check. And it'll also read live data streams and do things like that. And, of course, it's in multiple languages, which hopefully are all translated well. So, what I'm going to do is go walk over to one of my vehicles that I've given a check engine light just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to plug in the code reader, show you a little bit about it, and then show you how it can check the code and report back what the issue is. Okay, so at this point I have the vehicle's ignition on, the OBD2 reader plugged in, it's all booted up and it's all ready to go. So in order to give my vehicle a check engine light, all I did was unplug the mass airflow sensor and started up the vehicle, so it recognized that there was no sensor present and would throw a check engine light for that. So what I'm expecting out of this is some sort of mass airflow sensor open circuit or circuit issue uh, error. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and scan the OBD2 system. It recognizes the specific protocol this car uses. It makes its handshake with the car, and it tells me that I have a malfunction indicator lamp on, and that I have two diagnostic trouble codes in the ECU. So if I read codes, current diagnostic trouble codes, I have a mass or volume airflow circuit sensor A issue, and I have an intake air temperature sensor 1 issue. That's because on this particular vehicle, the intake air temperature sensor is built into the mass airflow sensor. So when I, unpl when I unplugged that, I also unplugged effectively the intake air temperature sensor. Now, what's nice about this reader is that it gives me the information about what the issue is. A lot of other readers and another one that I have will only give you the code number. So PO110 or PO100, it won't tell you what the issue is. So that is a very nice feature to have. Some of these codes, some of us have memorized just because we've encountered them, you know, over the years uh, on a fairly frequent basis, but there's a lot of codes that not everybody knows, and it's nice to have the unit report to you what the code is, just so we have a general idea of what we're dealing with so we can start a diagnosis a little bit deeper. So in addition to that, it also lets you uh, do data streams. So if you view all items, you sh it should give me a list of all the data streams that I can pull off the vehicle which is going to be things like O2 sensor voltage, air fuel ratio, uh, electronic transmission control, so that would be transmission temperature, uh, short-term and long-term fuel trims, intake advance, spark advance, oh, intake air temperature, sorry, uh, VSS, so that's going to be speed sensor, gives me RPM. So these are nice things that whenever you're diagnosing an issue with a car, if you have an engine running rough, something like that, you can pull all of these different items and see, okay, is the engine running rough potentially because of a mass airflow sensor issue, an O2 sensor problem, are your fuel trims way out of whack? You can kind of start diagnosing electronically using a device like this. Now, in addition to data streams, it also gives you freeze frame data. So if you have a check engine light that triggers a freeze frame, something like an emissions related or airflow related check engine light, you can go into that to view the information Basically what a freeze frame is, is whenever the code is triggered and for a time before and after that, it captures and saves the data in the ECU so you can go and review it later, which is really, really handy if you have an issue that keeps on popping up and you're not quite sure what causes it because you're driving and it happens while you're driving. So you're able to go back, basically rewind time and figure out what exactly was happening at that time and try to narrow down the issue. It's something that isn't used all the time, but whenever you need it, it is absolutely invaluable. Looks like it has an oxygen sensor test. So some sort of test that you can use to test your oxygen sensors. Not sure exactly how that works. I know that the oxygen sensors on this car are good. Um, onboard monitoring, EVAP system test. That's going to cycle your EVAP system and all the solenoids to make sure that everything is functioning properly. And vehicle information, I assume that's going to be VIN number and that sort of thing. So it looks like this car is probably too old to have the VIN programmed in the ECU. And then to back out of any menu, I guess you hit the exit button. 
So what I'm going to do, because my car does not actually have any issues, is erase the codes. Yes, I'm sure that I'd like to erase the codes. The ignition is on, the engine is off. Press the enter key to continue, hit the enter key, and the issues have been cleared. So in addition to the OBD2 scanning function, which is what I went through, this is your basically your emissions readiness screen. This is going to tell you if all of your subsystems, like your catalytic converter, oxygen sensor, secondary air injection, EGR, any of those types of systems, if they are functional, ready. Your car may not be equipped with all of them, so if you go into that and you see some systems not being ready, you, that may not be an issue. A lot of vehicles, including the one that I'm looking at right now, do not have, for example, an EGR system. So that's something that will show is not ready, but doesn't mean that there's a problem. Catalytic converter, something like that. If that shows is not ready, you need to drive the car around a little bit longer if you're an emissions test, something like that, um, because that system has not readied itself. This is the battery test. That's going to be how you test a battery. I'll go into that in just a second. That diagnostic trouble code lookup, it shows you the same information as what I just saw whenever I pulled up the error codes when I scanned the ECU, but that allows you to plug in any diagnostic trouble code you want to and look it up really quickly. So if you have, say, a friend who says, hey, I have a PO whatever code, you can just quickly plug this into your car and look it up using this, which is nice. Um, review, I'm not sure what that does, so let's go into that. Okay, so this is going to let you review any diagnostic trouble code data that you saved onto this device from the ECU. So that's going to be really handy if you want to keep a log of issues that have happened to your car or come up with your car. And it may even let you catalog them by vehicle. That would be very nice if it does that. Um, setup is just going to be to change your language, your unit of measure, whether or not you want it to beep when you push buttons and things like that. So just out of curiosity, let's run a battery test as well. So turn the ignition off and then start detection. Looks like there's a little bit of a misspelling in the user interface, but that's forgivable because the device seems to work really well. Please turn the ignition on. And it looks like it gives us our battery voltage. Very nice. So that lets us know that our battery is working properly. It's a really, really nice tool to have. Um, if you work on your own car, if you diagnose issues with your own car, as long as it's 1996 or newer and is equipped with OBD2, this is definitely a great thing to have. Some vehicles, like BMW and Mercedes, it might be a good idea to have this along with a specialty tool specifically for those. I work on a lot of Mercedes, so I have a specialty Mercedes scanner. Um, BMWs, they have kind of the same type of deal. Volkswagens, you have your VCDS system. Things like that, you might need specific to your vehicle. But this thing is good for any 1996 or newer vehicle, and it'll help you solve and diagnose a lot of different issues with them. As I said, great, great thing to have. Definitely some sort of scanner, if not this one, a different one, is something that you want in your toolbox if you work on your own cars. Or even if you don't, even if you have an issue on the side of the road, this would be a great thing to keep in your trunk. So with that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.